Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a brand new Chelsea news video. The international break is over, which although as an England fan, it feels pretty good. If you're an England fan, let me know how you think we got on with the three wins out of three in the comments down below. But before the international break, Chelsea were building some serious momentum. We were in wonderful form. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know what? You guys are enjoying this a bit too much. Here's a two week break from Chelsea for you, which is always ever so slightly frustrating. But Thomas Tuchel has been working hard in the training ground, making sure that tactically we are ready when everyone comes back and we face West Brom on Saturday lunchtime. The first game of the weekend, chance to get ahead of steam and continue this good run of form. The match preview will be out tomorrow for the West Brom game, the first one in a couple of weeks, so make sure you're ready for that. Subscribe, turn on bell notifications so that you don't miss a bloody video. But today, got a couple of news stories for you, including a 20-year-old Brazilian currently playing for Palmeiras in Brazil, who supposedly is a mixture of the next Dani Alves and Yaya Torre. I'm going to show you a couple of clips of this geezer because, quite frankly, there's not that much that we know. I'll be very honest with you. I don't watch the Brazilian league very closely. I just don't have the flipping time for it. So if someone wants to come and morph me into a second person and just filter me the info, that would be absolutely delightful. But... The first story that we're going to talk about today is the new 21-22 home kit that has been leaked on Footy Headlines. If you don't know Footy Headlines, it's a website where they usually get the football kits before they come out pretty damn early. So whenever anyone's like, oh, look at this kit for next season, chances are they saw the image on this website. And Chelsea's kit, I always feel like this with, uh, with new kits. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you guys to take a little ganders at now. It takes me a while to get used to the new kit in terms of when I first see the images released before the current season's even finished, I'm always like, oh, it's a bit new, isn't it? Whenever we look at something new, it takes us a while for our eye to adjust to the fact that it's no longer going to be what we're used to seeing, it's going to be this. This one, I feel as though my initial response is I feel like they're doing a little bit too much. I much prefer the classic old school limited patterns, just, you know, the, the sponsor now, obviously, the, the Nike tick, and then the Chelsea logo. For me, that's all I really crave, but it's, uh, for me, it's too much, actually. But knowing myself, I will probably change my mind as soon as next season begins. That's usually the way it goes with me in kits. Let me know your thought on this kit in the comments down below. The second story that I want to talk about today before we get into that Brazilian geezer is Declan Rice. Declan Rice, everybody has been talking about how good Declan Rice has been during this international break for England. Not only Declan Rice, but Mason Mount as well. Obviously, Mason Mount's already a Chelsea player, so we know how good he is. England fans and Gareth Southgate now know exactly how good he is, but Declan Rice was another shining member of a successful England international break. Indispensable is the current word that is being used by the media to describe Declan Rice's influence within this England squad. I don't want to talk about this one for too long, but I wanted to address it simply because the more I watch Declan Rice play, be it for West Ham United, who obviously I don't want him to do well at West Ham because I don't want West Ham to do well because they're actually rivals for us this season and pretty much every season, but points-wise and Champions League space-wise, they are this year. But seeing Declan Rice play for England and putting in commanding displays again, it's got to a point now where I'm really starting to see the buy-in if Chelsea were to continue to go after Declan maybe this summer. I don't think that this summer will be the time that Declan Rice will move. I think as long as West Ham finish the season well and get a Europa League place at minimum for next season... I think Declan Rice would be actually smart to stay at West Ham to play a European campaign with them. And then who knows in a couple of years time, all of the big boys will probably be after Declan Rice if he carries on going the way he's going. But it's at a point now where I seriously rate the geezer and I would love him at Chelsea. Now, the main story of this video comes from Simon Phillips on Twitter. That's where I saw that Chelsea are interested in a player 
that I knew absolutely nothing about until obviously I went and did the classic YouTube search and see what this guy can do, read a couple of articles, saw how things are going for him in his development in Brazil. He's been called up to the international team as well because he plays right back as well as in the central midfield role in the engine role, which is what has been written here about Gabriel Menino, the 20-year-old Brazilian who's broken into the international scene. Brazil have been looking for a long-term replacement for Dani Alves, who's been at the top of the footballing world in his position for so long. There was Danilo for Brazil, who's not really hit the heights that we saw from him in the early stages of his career. So Menino is coming in as an option for Brazil already with a World Cup coming next summer. You're gonna see where I'm going with this point soon. But the fact that this guy can play in that defensive midfield, Yaya Torre kind of role, which is the comparison that's been made. And he was actually shown Yaya Torre as the mold for how in the early stages of his career, he's obviously still only 20 years old, but Yaya Torre was the mold that Gabriel Menino is being kind of trained and push towards to play a little bit like. You add into the fact that he can still play right back as well, and a lot of people, when they saw this story, particularly the responses to Simon Phillips' tweet over on Twitter, tweet over on Twitter, it's bloody obvious really, isn't it? People are saying, ah, it's another Malang Sar. we sign him, then we loan him out. But what I find very interesting with this one is that we've already got a right back at the club who is very competent on the right, but also has the kind of attributes to play in a central defensive midfield role. And of course, I'm talking about Reese James. So when Chelsea are building a side full of versatile players, you know, you've got Mount who can play anywhere in the midfield, Havertz who can seemingly do the same, Timo Werner can play out on the wing, can play as a striker, Reese James, right back, CDM. To add another youngster who is already being compared to Yaya Torre, the asking price is supposedly around 13 million euros, 1-3. It's not the most, you know, record-breaking transfer signing, but from what I'm seeing, which I know it's very small amounts, YouTube highlight clips, but from what I'm seeing of how this guy's career trajectory is going, the fact that Atletico Madrid and Juventus are also tailing this youngster, for that versatility and that potential, I think this could be a very good one for Chelsea to look to go and pursue. We also bring it back to what I mentioned just earlier about Declan Rice and N'Golo Kante turned 30 this week or late last week. And you look at that and you think, well, as brilliant as Kante is, and I think that Atletico performance was his best ever in a Chelsea shirt, as good as he is, you know, 20 years old, 30 years old, I think we know whose career is going to peter out next. It's going to be N'Golo Kante, not 20-year-old Gabriel Menino. So if Chelsea are looking to make a signing this summer to, again, provide an option on the right-hand side, also provide an option in a defensive midfield role, for 13 million euros, this Brazilian geezer who's been compared to Yaya Torre from Palmeiras in Brazil sounds to me like a very exciting signing. Don't know again how close or whether Chelsea have even made a direct approach for the kid, but if they have, and when they do, I will let you guys know here on GBFC. It's one of those signings where it's very easy, like people have already done and like I initially did. My first thought was, I don't know this guy. He's 20 years old Brazilian. That's always like an exciting thing to hear, but he's probably just gonna be another one of those players who goes out on loan. But when you think about what Chelsea need, there is talk that we do need a central midfielder in that holding role. There's also talk that we need someone for cover on the right side of the field or in centre back as well, where he can play in all of those different positions. He started his career as a centre back when he was doing his trials in Brazil. So this kind of, you know, uh, let's call it his, his CV. It looks pretty good in terms of what he can do, where he can play, and how that definitely fits into what Chelsea will be looking to strengthen in this summer. I'm not gonna take up any more of your time than I need to today because, well, we've got a massive one coming up this weekend against West Brom. Hopefully we get a player ratings video out after the game because of the win, as well as six things we learned that we always have after every single match. And as always, when there is a Chelsea game, you guys will be able to go and submit your answers to the questions over on GBFC Selects to be in with a chance of winning the thousand pounds. It's 
It's been a couple of weeks, so make sure you go over there, log in, submit your answers to the questions. It might be live either later on today or tomorrow, and obviously I'll remind you guys in the match preview. Thank you so much for watching. We are finally out of the international break, as fun as it's been to see England win. There's also a link in the description to GBFC2, my second football channel where I talk about more rounded footballing topics and like extensions of Chelsea stuff. The link to that is in the description. I'm back uploading there as well and I'd love to see you guys go and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me, let me know what you know about Gabriel Menino, if you know something that I don't, in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Come on, you blues.